In this video, we're going to be looking at concrete substrates. Concrete is a combination of aggregates, water and Portland cement. Concrete comes in many forms and can vary in density and strength. There is also a big difference between new and old concrete and its overall condition. Many variables exist with concrete and it's one of the most difficult substrates to evaluate and successfully apply a coating to. Unpainted, concrete does have drawbacks, all of which can be overcome by the application of a protective coating system. The look and aesthetics of raw concrete are not always appealing, as the surface is often blighted with stains, streaks and marks from form oils, release agents, mortar smears, site damage and wear and tear. Imperfections arising from blowholes, honeycombing and on-site damage affect not only the aesthetics, but also the integrity of the concrete itself and will require filling and patching. Once concrete has been successfully laid, it usually takes about 28 days to fully cure. This is called the concrete hydration process. During this time, the alkalinity of the concrete reduces and its moisture content also reduces. After this period, the concrete can be prepared and properly coated. Concrete curing times can heavily depend on ventilation, temperature, and the overall concrete thickness. When concrete is fresh, it is very highly alkaline. This alkalinity protects reinforcing steel from rapidly corroding. Unfortunately, uncoated concrete readily absorbs moisture and carbon dioxide, which in turn neutralizes the concrete, lowering its alkalinity and thus allowing steel to corrode. When steel corrodes, the iron oxide corrosion products occupy up to eight times the original volume of steel, creating stress within the concrete and so the concrete cracks around the reinforcing steel. Painting concrete with appropriate products will prevent the neutralization process from occurring by protecting the concrete's naturally high alkalinity. From an aesthetic point of view, coating a floor in an attractive color not only adds light, but it may also impart a sense of space, warmth, and elegance. In fact, paint and coatings in general are one of the cheapest and easiest means of changing the mood and feel of a space. Concrete is sensitive to chemical attack by certain chemicals. Not only do acids readily eat into concrete, but there are many seemingly benign chemicals such as sugar that aggressively attack concrete causing catastrophic failure. Poorly cured concrete generates a surface dust which continues for the life of the floor or until the concrete is sealed. So painting a floor prevents it from generating and accumulating its own dust. Concrete dust contaminates food, beverages, electronic equipment and other goods. The natural porosity of concrete allows absorption of liquids and adhesion of stains, which creates an unsightly appearance and makes complete removal of spills and any associated odours impossible. Filling the profile of the concrete floor and sealing the porous surface creates a smooth, easily cleaned and maintained floor. In fact, coating a floor is a mandatory requirement for workplace hygiene in many industries. And now that it's possible to choose easy to use waterborne epoxy coatings such as Dulux Luxifloor Eco 2, what better way to increase your property value than painting your floor? Once concrete has been poured and it has cured, a thin layer of powdery cement dust, referred to as concrete latence, remains on the surface. This is a very non-durable, loosely bound layer. If a coating is applied to this layer, then the potential for coating delamination or peeling is high preparation of the concrete surface with grinding equipment removes this latence and is crucial to long-term performance of the coating system, ensuring adequate adhesion. The concrete prior to coating should be free of all contaminants including oils, grease and salts. Here I have a concrete pad and in a moment I will be grinding it to remove the concrete latence on the very top surface. Later on I'll show you what a surface looks like prior to the application of a protective coating system. Here we have an example of a handheld concrete diamond grinder. This particular tool is perfect for doing small areas or wall edges. One of its benefits is also got a vacuum attachment to remove all the dust that's created from the grinding process. You'll also notice that with the disc, these are interchangeable and different discs can provide more aggressive or a finer grind depending on the requirement on the surface. This again is vital to make sure that that non-durable concrete layer or concrete latence is removed prior to the application of a coating. 
Once that layer is removed, the coating is able to adhere to the substrate and provide the maximum durability. Okay, I've just completed diamond grinding this panel. And as you can see, the grinding has removed a bit of paint that I sprayed on this panel previously, just to show you what it looks like and the comparison of the grinding actual surface preparation method. What the grinding has done is removed the concrete latents, which is right at the top of the surface and that non-durable layer. This is now fit to accept the protective coating. The good thing about this surface now is that when you apply the coating to this, it's going to have something very durable to stick to, it's going to have great adhesion, and it's going to maximise the longevity or the durability of that coating. When you're talking about a concrete floor, like a garage, a car park, or a shopping centre floor, this is the most easiest thing to do. You can see the mess I made was minimal. There's a bit of noise uh, associated with the surface preparation. But the other thing you'll see is that I haven't introduced any water or any acid. So I don't have to flush anything down the drain or the storm water. I don't have to wait for the surface to dry prior to coating. Once I've completed this surface preparation, I would vacuum up the surface again just to make sure it's completely clean and we're ready to go. This is, this is the best option. Acid etching of concrete surfaces has been commonly used in the past. There are a number of issues associated with acid etching of concrete. It is typically a non-reliable method of achieving a satisfactory surface preparation result. It also creates acidic waste and uses high amounts of water for the neutralisation of the acid residue. And it also creates a wet substrate that needs to dry out before coating. Due to compatibility issues, and just like our galvanising discussion, for coating concrete, oil-based or alkyd type primers, or coatings containing an alkyd resin like an enamel, should not be used directly over concrete or masonry surfaces. Common examples of coatings suitable for concrete surfaces include epoxies, water and solvent based, polyurethane coatings, acrylic modified coatings and a number of other specialty variations. Depending on the environment where the structure will be placed, it's important to refer to the product data sheet with regards to the types of coatings to be used over concrete, the dry film thicknesses and the overall system. This will ensure that premature breakdown of the coating will not occur over concrete or masonry surfaces. For any further information, contact your Dulux Protective Coatings representative.